In my opinion, um, well, the way the cuts have come about, because obviously there's been a, a general election last May, um, and the Liberal Democrats uh, formed the coalition government with the Conservative Party. They are restructuring the way things like the NHS and the education system, higher education and schools and things like that. Um, they're restructuring that, you know, um, under the guise of the cuts. Like I completely believe that it's it's you know an ideology that that makes it harder for the, the masses to engage and get the services that they need and deserve. Uh, obviously, this isn't the first time we've seen a big shake-up of higher education. The Labour government, last Labour government, managed to lie to us twice about tuition fees. So, you know, it's lucky they didn't get a third attempt to really try and put up the fees. So, from that, we've seen Lord Brown's report, which was set up by... Uh, Lord Mandelson previously to say how to bring in more money into a higher education, which recommended a raise of tuition fees up to £9,000. 89% cuts to teaching funding just to Leeds Met. At the same time, like lecturers are facing, they're going on strike, they're expecting um, cuts to their pensions and pay and compulsory redundancies. So overall, we're expecting like a massive attack on the quality of our education, but we're expected to pay more for it, which doesn't seem fair. Let's get as many people as possible there on Saturday and then we make sure beyond Saturday that we fight for the most action that we can get, that we bring this country to a standstill and we show them that we are not prepared to put up with the brutalisation of ordinary working class people. The depth of the catastrophe with the economy is quite, a, quite astounding. If you're going to create jobs and if you're going to have uh, job creation schemes, for instance, you have to have a lot of money to do it, and it isn't there. So consequently, there's going to be a lot of deprivation going on at least for the next five years. And that can't be done without hitting higher education as well. University courses are split into four different bands. Band A are your sciences and your lab-based courses, where Band D are your sort of arts, ones, you know, fine art, etc. So Band A still have all their funding because they're deemed, you know, priority for what the country needs, whereas Band D have had their funding completely taken away. I get very cross when people talk about the strange courses that people do these days, because some of these courses where, you know, media studies or whatever, people are getting jobs from those better than from some of the traditional courses. Places like Leeds Met do a bit of band B and band A, so we'll lose a considerable amount of our funding, but not all of it. With more and more people wanting to go to university, if you look at the figures in the last sort of 20 years, we're now looking at nearly pushing towards 50% of those leaving school going to university. It used to be sort of 10, 15, 20%. So there's a huge increase in the number of people wanting to go. And trying to make that sustainable has been quite a difficult task. And so uh, the Brown Review looked at all the options that were available to put these universities on a stable and sustainable footing so that more people can enjoy the benefits. And that's why we're having to make these very difficult decisions. The students can take it because they just sit around and get drunk. There's always a truth in the stereotype somewhere along the line, but also the amount of not only money but social capital the students bring to cities in this country and to the world is, you know, phenomenal. to find our way to the feeder march which 
was massive. It was down Whitehall and it was covered in people, students um, standing on bus stops and like holding onto lamps and just, it, it was so packed. Um, the demonstration itself was really, really good. There were so many different people there. It was so big. It was exhilarating to see so many students out who cared. I sort of pushed my way up um, just to see what was what was going on um, and ran to try and see how long this, this thing was because I'd never been on, I've been going on demonstrations, you know, for various things since I was 15 and I've never seen anything that size. Well, it, it makes every MP aware that there's a lot of people outside who feel very strongly about what we're debating that day. And that's right and proper. That's why the right to protest, to protest peacefully is such an important part of our, our freedoms as a country. So we went across the river and went along South Bank and um, just as we were coming back over the river towards sort of the other end of Westminster, um, that's when we saw sort of the police, large police presence, all these police vans sort of rushing towards um, the far end of Westminster, towards what was the Millbank riots. So that's when we saw all the commotion and a bit of sort of smoke and just loads of people running down towards the Millbank centre. And there was a large amount of police vans and um, a lot of police officers at that stage. So we arrived and there, was, there must have been a couple of thousand people there. So we pushed our way through and it was quite an oppressive sort of atmosphere. The flares and fires, we pushed our way through the crowd. And it was at that stage where the fire extinguisher, which was much publicized in the press, was thrown off the roof. And that's when the atmosphere kind of turned a bit more hostile. The people on the roof I think that's when they're their aims became a bit split to what the general student mass has wanted. Uh, theirs was a bit more anarchic, whereas ours is a bit more sort of fun-loving. What happened at Millbank, as far as I can see and understand, is that it, you know, it was infiltrated, frankly, by um, an element that was just trying to hijack um, the, the protest. And in fairness, if you look at uh, other protests that have happened, uh, it looks like the same thing has been happening there. It's people that are not part of the general protest. It's those that just want to cause trouble. That's not fair. And there was a large police presence at the front and rioting, basically smashing windows and people smashing doors and occupying the building itself. And at that stage, we had seen sort of enough of the front that we wanted to get out. And then we crossed back over, went sort of to the riverbank and, and watched it from a bit of further distance. But it was at that stage when things was really sort of, things were kicking off. I do think that if Millbank hadn't happened, the protest on 10, 11, 10 wouldn't have made it to the front pages. Students were smashing windows. That isn't hurting anyone. Police have riot gear on, they've got shields, they've got batons which they hit people with over the head. I mean, Alfie Meadows, um, was one student who um, received a blow to the head and as a result he had a brain hemorrhage. I was lying on glass and I had my chest stamped on by a police officer who had full riot gear on. That was my day really. Well, I think the main advantage really of, of the, the system that we're trying to, to create at the moment is that it will, first of all, put each of the universities on a more sustainable footing. So they will be setting their, their fees and their charges. But many young people who don't get into higher education is, is this going to put them off from applying? And I'm really concerned that it will because of the scale of the fees that are going to be charged. The student debt we have, now, we have now is adjusted only for inflation, so it doesn't have interest on it. The new, the new yeah, fee structures allow um, there to be you know, a corporate rate of interest on those student loans, so students will be graduating with more debt and that debt will accumu accumulate interest. So really we don't know how it's going to benefit, but I think it's going to change the cultures towards higher education. I don't want you to pay me! Pay me! Unless you want to pay my university, I ain't coming down! Back off! Oh my 
I don't know where the camera foot nick leg we condemned you condemning us to a life of debt and poverty the police kettled the London protest on the 24th and that and that's when things got violent rather than things being violent and then the police kettling um, and I got stuck in Parliament Square on the 9th of December, which was the day of the fees vote, I got kettled. I actually wasn't in Parliament Square. I was walking up towards Trafalgar Square and was charged by a line of police horses. Uh, the police didn't seem to know what was going on either. I, I was trying to talk to them and because I'd been separated from a few younger students and I was saying, you know, that they're under 18, they're 16, 17, you know, get them through so at least we can be together. Um, and he turns around to me and said, the only people who are allowed to leave this pen are people under the age of 10. That's a, a young person for you um, on that day. I asked him which direction to at least work towards to get out of the kettle and he didn't know. He said he needed to talk to his supervisor and I asked him where his supervisor was. Um, he didn't know where his supervisor was. At this point, you know, it was dark, a lot of people were very angry. It was freezing, I, I remember that, it was freezing and we were burning um, just leaflets on the floor so you can get some form of heat for a few seconds um, before it'll go, um, just to keep warm. One of the young FE students just burst into tears because of the strain that she'd been under. I mean, taking, taking into account, you know, a few hours previously before this, we'd been charged with horses. That is an irresponsible act. I think um, for people who, are, who are claim to keep the peace, it, 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 was, it was a very difficult day, very difficult. And I was trapped in this kettle. <laughs> um, and the news came through that we had lost. And I just huge feelings of dejection. I personally feel let down by the government. I think they're spineless. I think they've betrayed the students. We've seen that they've just completely turned their backs. Um, and I think it actually shows them to be very opportunistic. It's all going to amount to a lower quality of life, I think, for the, fut for the future of students. I do feel more let down by the Lib Dems because the fact of the matter is every single member of parliament that belongs to the Lib Dems um, signed a pledge the NUS put forward saying we will not vote to raise the cost of higher education, raise the cost of tuition fees. Every single one of them signed it and promised it was in their manifesto um, and they've completely backtracked on it. Nobody forced Nick Clegg to sign the piece of paper. No one made him make a video saying I promise you if you vote for me I will not vote to treble tuition fees. People cannot understand why he then did the very opposite as soon as he became the Deputy Prime Minister. I can't think of another, you know, any other more perfect way of, of explaining what a, a political betrayal that is. I, th I think they've betrayed the entire student population. Lots of students voted for Lib Dems, lots of students voted for Lib Dems and lots of students are, um, that, you know, that I've spoken to are kicking themselves and will never ever vote for that party ever again. My MP for back home, uh, David Ward in Bradford East, former lecturer at Leeds Met, uh, all the Lib Dem candidates signed this NUS pledge that said, I will vote against any rise in tuition fees, I will campaign to stop this happening. And yeah. then he signed it. Uh, and I met him on the day of the vote, and, I'd already, and I knew he was voting yes for the fees. Uh, and you know, there's some the question to ask him, so, but you signed this pledge, David, you signed this pledge to the people and to your party, why are you doing it? He said, oh no, I didn't sign the pledge, someone in my office just signed it for me. And that content of, you know, letting people sign it, what else does he not care about, what else does he do and what else is he going to let the people of you know, my constituency and the country down on because he's letting someone in his office do his job for him. Oh, I think people were very angry and I think they saw that Liberal Democrat MPs had signed a pledge that they were going to do something and then reneged on it, in, in, not in time but most had done so. I mean I think it's, it's not a good idea to sign pledges before elections. The Liberal Democrats have decided that they rather than sort of you know snipe from the sidelines and and watch someone else do the job and a very difficult job that we've got given the deficit that actually they're going to be a part of it and I think that has meant that they've had to take on some compromises to their stance because they are in partnership with another party and I, you know that's not easy and they have come in for some tremendous criticism and I admire them for actually you know, doing what they can to improve the fortunes and the, 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 the sort of finances of this country. Uh, the protest on the 26th of March is all of the trade unions in this country coming together to march and uh, 
their united banner and lots of groups and societies are getting involved in this as well because this is much broader this is a real you know statement about people aren't going to take this line down to the public sector it's a huge employer in this country so we've got to really you know this is really stand up and shout about actually this is going to damage and cripple you know our country um we've seen throughout history that that like large mass movements can change policy it can change things on a very very high level the civil rights movement and um, the right to suffrage um it was a right that 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 happened not because it was given from some benevolent leader it was it was taken by people who knew that they deserved that right um, again it's a right not a privilege I think we have a duty to stand up for the generations that will come after us because we enjoy we enjoy this education and we enjoy this sort of academic stimulation as it were but the generations that come after us, they're not of an age yet to decide. They're not old enough to vote, and so they may just miss a general election by a, a number of years, but there's so much that hangs in the balance for them. So I think there's always going to be a, a want to be educated, and I think there's always going to be a need for people to be educated. And I think we need to take that upon ourselves to grant people that right. We, we still go on and we still fight, because there is nothing else we can do. Um, you can't give it up, I don't think. Something happened in here What it is ain't exactly clear There's a man with a gun over there Telling me I got to beware Think it's time we stop Hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down being drawn Nobody's right if everybody's wrong Young people speak in their mind Getting so much resistance from behind It's time we stop hey, What's that sound? Everybody look what's going